as you know, athletes um, practice and go through all kinds of special training in order to be fit to endure an athletic contest. When we look at all those contestants in the Olympics, after many years of practice and development of their muscles and strength, the culmination is the winning of the gold medal. But their, their ability to get to that point actually started when they were conceived. God gave them very special gifts and talents to have a strong and healthy body that could perform those magnificent athletic uh, events. Paul goes on to tell us in the first reading, or John rather, in the Acts of the Apostles, <clears throat> that God prepared for a long time, for centuries, to send the Savior into the world. And he goes on to recount the history of salvation, how God was watching over the chosen people through Egypt and through the desert for 400 years, and on and on, giving them kings and prophets and judges, and all leading up to the descendant of David, who was Jesus. And that Jesus, who was crucified and who rose from the dead, is the culmination of all history. It's the fullness of time. It's the greatest event in all of history. Jesus' death and resurrection from the dead. Because the Savior came into the world and redeemed us all, giving us all the opportunity to gain eternal life. During this Easter season, we proclaim that every day for 40 days up to the ascension of Jesus, and then even after that to the Pentecost. And you and I are very fortunate because we live in the fullness of time. The death and resurrection of Jesus, we participate in at every Mass that we celebrate. The same reality, all that was there at Calvary is here in this church tonight as we celebrate the Holy Eucharist. We are here with the crucified Jesus, we are here with Jesus who rose from the dead. Our Blessed Mother is standing here at the altar because she always stood steadfastly at the cross. And I like to think of those things, that that's really true. We can't see with our eyes, but we see with the eyes and the heart of faith that God is here. And we are participants in that great event. Notice one thing in the, in the first reading, that it says that Mark left um, separated from Paul. We don't know why, but he left, and obviously Paul was upset. They disagreed about something, even with these wonderful people in the beginning of the church. But then as Paul's in prison and he's, he needs help, he tells one of the other disciples to go and get Mark and to bring him to him because he needs him. Reconciliation took place between the two of them, and Mark became the author of one of the four Gospels. We can see that Jesus in the Gospel um, is the end of that Gospel where Jesus at the Last Supper washes the feet of the disciples. And he remarks that one who will raise his heel against me is here, meaning Judas. Judas could have repented of what he did in turning Jesus over for crucifixion. But instead of wanting to accept Jesus' forgiveness, he killed himself. He took his own life. What a difference between Paul and Mark and Judas. Um, both had the same opportunity, but they did not receive it. And for us, it's always often difficult when we have to reconcile with someone else. It's sometimes very difficult because we've been hurt or we have hurt someone else. And we need to see that that was the example of Jesus and the saints in the scriptures, that reconciliation is the most important thing that at some point we need to say, let's talk. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. And we need to hear someone else say that to us and say, I can accept your sorrow. And what does it do? It doesn't take away the wrong that was done, but it heals us inside so that we can keep on going, that we can renew relationships and grow with the Lord. Jesus forgot everything he, that Peter did and made him, still made him the first pope. Jesus would have forgotten what Judas did if he had asked him. And so we need to remember that that's the example Jesus sets for us. And so on our road to eternal life, we have to be a part of everything Jesus did, um, being faithful to his word, being faithful to the commandments of his Father, 
and above all, imitating him in his goodness, his kindness, his charity, and his so many, many acts of reconciliation. Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions. <clears throat> 